Greetings, a short video to help you work this problem. The capital asset pricing model, the CAPM, is a financial model that assumes returns on portfolios are normally distributed. Suppose a portfolio has an average annual return of 12.5%, in other words, an average gain of 12.5%, with a standard deviation of 32%. A return of 0% means the value of the portfolio doesn't change. A negative return means that the portfolio loses money, and a positive return means the portfolio gains money. What percent of years does this portfolio lose money, i.e. have a return less than 0%? Okay, first off, and this is very important as in all of these problems, we're going to come in and draw the situation. So let's go ahead and go, let's go dark blue for this problem. All right, so this is my distribution of returns on portfolio. So x is equal to returns, okay? It's the return on your portfolio, and they're giving us that the mean return on the portfolio is 12.5%. And the standard deviation of the returns is 32%. This is a highly variable distribution, lots and lots of spread in it, okay? So in other words, the model that we're using here is N of 12.5 by 32. Okay, so they want to know what percent of the years the portfolio um, loses money. In other words, return is less than 0%. So that means come over here. We're going to mark 0% on our return axes. And what we're looking for is the percentage of times that we get a negative value. So a negative return would be any return that is less than 0. So it would be this shaded region right here. So we want to know that shaded region or proportion or probability of a return of being negative. So to figure that out, that means that what we're going to do is calculate an, a normal CDF or NCDF to abbreviate it, make it a little bit shorter. So notice that our left end point here is going to be negative E99 or negative infinity. Our right end point is going to be zero. Our mean is going to be 12.5 and our standard deviation is going to be equal to 32. I recommend that you write that down before you go grab the calculator and type it in. Generally speaking, it's going to make that transition a little bit easier. Okay, so let's go grab our calculator here. And so if we grab the calculator and we put those numbers in, go second VARS to get to distribution, go to normal CDF, which is option number two here. I'm going to put in a negative second comma to get the E, 99. Our upper point is going to be at 0. Our mean was 12.5 and our standard deviation was 32. Since I'm on the newer calculator, it's going to ask me to paste all that into a command. If you're on an older calculator, you would have to fill in all of these numbers inside of the parentheses, of course, recognizing that the comma is above your 7. Hit an enter and we get back that about 34.8 percent of the time you'll lose money on these, okay? So, so about 34.8% of the time the portfolio loses money. That's the way of thinking about it. It gets returned less than 0%, which means that you lost money, all right? Okay, so key thing to notice there is they gave us a position, the 0%, that was an x value. That's a value on the x-axis and wanted to know what is the corresponding area that goes with it. That corresponding area gives us the proportion of times that that value or less in this case would have happened. All right, let's take a look at another one. Let's take a look at another example referencing the capital asset pricing model, okay? So capital asset pricing model, again, assumes returns on portfolios are normally distributed. Suppose the portfolio has an average annual rate of 12.5%. Well, okay, same, same average, same standard deviation. Always check that, make sure that's true, but looking good, like that's what we got going. So let's go ahead again and draw ourselves a normal distribution that represents the situation. In other words, that models our, our distribution of portfolio returns. So we know that's got a mean of 12.5 of and a standard deviation of 32. So in other words, we know that's 12.5. And we know that that is 32. And this again is my x-axis. x-axis again is equal to returns, okay? So it's the return on my portfolio. 
Okay, so what do they want from us this time? Well, this time they want to know the cutoff. And that's a key word. When you see cutoff, generally what they're asking you for is an x value. In other words, they're asking you for a value on the x axis, and they want to cut off for the highest 15%. So what that means is that they want us to come over here in the distribution and say, okay, I want to know the cutoff. In other words, what is this position on the axis right here? So that this area above that cutoff point is 15%. Okay, well, that means that I'm going to have to use what? INV norm, because this time they gave me an area and they want a position. I need to use the inverse norm. Okay, so if I'm going to use INV norm, I have to give the area from the left hand side. So giving the area from the left hand side means that what I need to enter in the calculator is 0 0.85. So that means it's INV norm 0 0.85 with a mean of 12.5 and a standard deviation of 32. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and get our calculator out here. And let's go ahead and take a look and see what that is. Okay. So let's get the calculator up here. So we're going to go second distributions, INV norm, which is 3. I'm going to put an area of 0.85. I'm going to put in the mean of 12.5 and put in the standard deviation of 32. And again, it's going to paste that command for me. If you're working on an older calculator, you got to type those numbers in with the commas. Hit an enter, and it tells me that what? 46, let's go 45.7% is the cutoff, so that, that's the return. 47.5% is your return. 15% of the portfolios earn more than that. 85% of the portfolios make less than that. So let's get to the right page here. Let's see, where's my portfolio page? Somewhere in here. I made too many pages. There we go. Okay. So this tells me, turning my pen back on, that this cutoff number right here, grab our calculator again for just a second, our cutoff number was what? Oh, it's 45.7% if we round off correctly. So in other words, this number right here is 45.7%. Okay, well hopefully you found that useful. Again, if you need any additional help with these, do not be shy about asking me questions or asking me to do further videos. I do take requests.